showed you how to use sum to count the number of products from each manufacturer. What if we just want to sum up the prices that each manufacturer charges? It's a little bit of a strange thing to ask, but it's not too hard to figure out using the aggregation framework. Here's the original program that aggregated these number of products by manufacturer. And in that case, we had we were using dollar sum, and we were using the integer 1 here. But if we want to sum the prices, we just change it slightly. And what we do is we create a new key called sum prices and use the dollar sum operator. And then here, give dollar price, which is the column name from the documents that's, that are coming into the pipeline. And of course, we have quotes around it. And we have to use dollar price so that MongoDB knows that it's the price document key we're looking for. Let's run that and see what we get. All right, this is the result right here. I'll just bring it up show you that I ran it here. All right, so Mongo, using sum.js, that was the file that I just showed you, you can see that it just gives you a document in the result set for each manufacturer and sums their prices up. Pretty straightforward. All right, let's do a quiz. All right, for this quiz, we're going to have you write an The next operator we're going to go over is the dollar average operator for figuring out the average value of a key. Again, we have our products collection, and we're going to figure out the average price by category. So the average price, for instance, of a tablet. Here's a program that can do that, or, or an aggregation expression that can do that. We're going to dollar group. Our underscore ID is going to be a compound document of category, where we're going to name the key category, and then we're going to pull the dollar category value out. We're going to aggregate on that, on category. And then we're going to get the average price. You can see it says dollar average, and we should name that appropriately, so we'll name it average price. There it is. And we get the average of the dollar price expression, which is the price document value, key value. So let's go and run that. So here we are. We're going to run it. We're Mongo, and we're just going to redirect input from using average.js, which is the file I just showed you. And you can see that what we get is just three resulting documents, which makes sense. Category laptops, the average price. Category cell phones, the average price. And category tablets, the average price. Now it's time for you to do it. Let's do a quiz. So for this quiz, we're going to use the same data set we used in the last problem, which is a data set of US. The next aggregation expression we're going to go over is add the set. Now, add the set is interesting because there is no direct parallel from the world of SQL to do what you can do with add to set. And let me give you an example of how it works. Let's go back to our little data set of electronics products. And imagine that what we want to do is figure out what products does each manufacturer sell. So to do that, we basically want to group by manufacturer. And then for each of the manufacturers, we want to create a new array of categories they sell in. And it looks just like this. Here we are using the aggregation database again, which is where I put my little data set. We have DB products that aggregate. We're grouping again. That's our that's the stage we're, we're invoking from the aggregation pipeline. And we're going to group on underscore ID, maker, manufacturer. Maker is my name. Manufacturer is the key piece of information here. Dollar manufacturer to pull the manufacturer value out from the manufacturer key. And then we're creating a new key in the resulting document set called categories. And we're using add to set dollar category. And if you recall, each of these documents had a, had a category. And what this will do is it's building a new set of documents grouped by manufacturer. And if the category is not in this category's array, it's going to add it. Add the set adds it only if it's not already there. And the answer we get looks like this. So this will give us documents for each manufacturer, which I called maker, like Google makes tablets, Amazon makes tablets, Sony makes laptops. They make other things too, but not in my data set. Samsung makes tablets and cell phones. And Apple makes laptops and tablets. They also make cell phones, but I didn't put it in the data set. So you can see how that works, that you can create, you can build up an array while grouping by another key, like, for instance, manufacturer. Time for a quiz. Now you're going to write a query using at the set. This uses the zip code database, the population by zip code that we've been using in the last few problems. You can see it in the using sum quiz if you haven't, if you're not familiar with it. And 
I showed you some data out of the, out of that data set. Again, you can download it to your computer if you want. And this expression that we're going to look at is push. Now push is very similar to add to set, except that push does not guarantee that it adds each item only once. It doesn't look through to make sure it's not already there. So let's say that we wanted to see what categories each manufacturer had products in. And this is looking at our little electronics products database that, that we created before, our little collection, where we have a document for each product and it has a category and a manufacturer. And this time, rather than using add the set, we're going we're to use push. So if we do that, push the category, it shouldn't be too surprising, the result we get. What we get is that we have a document for each maker, like or manufacturer, Google, tablets, Amazon tablets, tablets. But you'll see these duplications, tablets, tablets. And we'll see with Apple, it's tablets, 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 laptops. And that's because there are four documents with Apple in it. And it's going to look at each one, and it's going to push this item onto this categories array versus add it to the set. And so they may appear more than once, and this is the result. It depends on what your goal is. This might be the right result or the wrong result, depending on what you're trying to do. Now let's do a quiz. All right, given the zip code data set, the last two expressions I want to go over before turning to some other topics is max and min. Now max and min are so similar, I'm not going to show both. But what max does is it picks out the max value in the grouping and it makes it available for creating a new key. So let's say we wanted to figure out the max price charged by any manufacturer in our little electronics products catalog. And again, the catalog looks a little bit like this. We're going to figure out the max price that Amazon charges or the max ch price that Google charges. We do that by grouping by the maker, pulling out the dollar manufacturer value and then setting up a new key max price with max of dollar price which is and this refers to the price key so we run that and we see the max price charged by google amazon sony etc and apple in our little collection now note that this is a little bit limiting because using this technique i can't figure out the name of the product and its max price because i'm grouping my manufacturer i can't group by manufacturer product that wouldn't make any sense I want to also pull out the product that corresponds to that price and max th there's really no easy way to do that but there are some ways to do that using sort and last and first which we're going to show after we go through some of the other pipeline stages that are available in the aggregation framework okay let's do a quiz here's the quiz thinking again about this things about the aggregation framework that's even better than what you have available using SQL with group by is that you can run a particular aggregation stage more than once. For instance, we can group more than once in the same aggregation query. Full grouping. Now, when would this be useful? All right, let me show you a data set that contains scores for each student in each class. So, for example, I might have student ID 1, class ID 397, he may have several entries, one for a homework, one for a quiz, and let's say that we want to figure out what's the average class grade in each class. Now to do that, first we need to average all the students' grades within the class, and after that, we need to average those grades. So that looks like this. db.grades that aggregate, I'm going to first do a grouping where I group by class ID and student ID and I'm going to average all those scores. So I'm going to average all those scores. And that's going to give me a bunch of documents that have the class ID and the student ID as an underscore ID and the average for those assessments. And then we're going to pipe that to the secondary grouping which is going to use as its underscore ID for grouping purposes, the underscore ID dot class ID of the previous stage. And then it's going to average those to get a final average. So let's run that and see what it looks like. So it looks like this. You can see for each of these class IDs, I've got an average. Now what, are the, what does it look like during after the first stage? Let's, let's do this. Let's just, I'm going to write this as a secondary file. Take this out. I'll take the second stage out. Alright, now I'll run that. 
So after the first stage, what I have is for each class and each student, I have an average. And then what I need to do is aggregate on the class and average those averages. And there might be a different number of assessments for each student. So I can't just take an average of everything for the class ID. I need to do two separate aggregation stages to get the answer. A little tricky, but it's very useful to be able to do this, as we'll see in other assignments. Now let's do a quiz. Given the following collection, and I've just created the next stage of the aggregation pipeline that I want to show you is the project phase. Now the project phase lets you reshape the documents as they come through the pipeline. It's a one-to-one -one stage of the pipeline. So for every document that comes into the project phase, one document will leave the project phase. You can do things like remove a key, you can add a new key, you can reshape the keys, and by that I mean that you could take a key and decide to put it into a sub-document with another key. Uh, there's also some simple functions that you can use on the keys, things like to upper and to lower. Well, this will make a value all uppercase, and this will make a value all lowercase. This can be useful if you want to standardize the values. So you can then do some grouping on them if there's some mixed case going on in the values prior to grouping. You can add something to the value. If it's an integer, you can add 10 or 20 or 1 or 2. You can multiply by a number. So let me, let me show you an example. So we have this little products collection that I've been showing you uh, and, and doing a lot of little transformations on. And I'm, I want to just reshape these documents. So to do that, I have this, this aggregation query, db.products.aggregate. And rather than call dollar group, I'm calling dollar project. And remember, this is an array of stages. So I could have projections and groupings, and I could have multiple projections and multiple groupings. But right now, I'm just going to have a single projection. And the first thing I've done is specify that I don't want to include the underscore ID field. Then I've also specified that I want to create a new key called maker and have it contain the value of, the, of dollar manufacturer. And you'll notice that dollar manufacturer is protected by quotes here. Don't forget to do that if you're calling upon its value. And then I'm running it through the to lower function because I want to lower, get a lowercase version of that. Then I'm creating a new key called details, which is a, a document that has two keys in it. One is a category, which is the old category from the document. And the other is the price which is using the multiply function and is multiplying, and you'll notice this is an array right here, it's multiplying the price times 10. And finally, I've got an, another key called item, which contains the old value of the key called name. So let's see what, what happens when I run that. All right, If I run that, I'm going to get a result that looks just like this. I've already run it. So you can see here, it says Maker Amazon Details Category Tablets Price 1990. It's been multiplied by 10. And finally, Item Kindle Fire. So the, the main reason you typically project is because you want to clean up the documents. But you can also do it at the beginning if you want to eliminate and cherry pick certain keys out of the document. That could save a lot of memory when you're running through a large number of documents. It's essentially a form of filtering step that you would get rid of a bunch of data before you send it to the grouping phase. OK, it is time for a quiz. Now thinking about that zip code. OK, the next stage of the aggregation pipeline I want to tell you about is the match phase. Now match performs a filtering, which is an end-to-one -one operation. Match will go through each document and see if the document matches your criteria. And if it does, then it will push it through to the next stage of the aggregation pipeline. Now there are two reasons why you might want to match. The first is that you might want to filter the documents and only perform aggregation on a subset on them. And the second reason that you might want to perform a match is you might want to filter the results itself, which is to perform an aggregation and then after that to filter the results. All right, let's look at the zip code collection and see how this might work. So here's what the zip code collection looks like. It's got uh, one document for each zip code, which is in the underscore ID, with a city and a location and a population and a state. Now let's say we wanted to filter this data set and only aggregate on documents in a particular state, let's say the state of California. This is a document for the state of Alabama. California has an abbreviation of CA, so we're going to filter on that. Here's how we would do this using aggregation. Now this is a small script in Emacs here. First we use ag, then we call db.zips.aggregate, and our aggregation pipeline only contains a single phase, which is a match phase. 
And you can see here that this is in square brackets, so the aggregation pipeline stages are part of an array, and there's only one in this case. And the match is specified right here, and it's very similar to the way you would specify criteria for a find command. We're saying that the state needs to be California. There you go. Move the cursor so you can see the quotes. Let's run that and see what happens. Okay, so I ran that, and you can see that the results now that every document that we see that's produced by aggregation is California. Now that we've reduced our data set down to just California, we can perform a grouping and get the population for each city by grouping on the city. And I'll show you how to do that. All right, here's how you would, you would first filter for California with the match. And then we have a comma here. This is the second element in the array in the pipeline. And now we're going to perform a group operation in this stage of the pipeline. We're going to group on the city. And we see that it's dollar city to pull the city field out of the document as it passes by. And we're going to aggregate on the population dollar pop. If you remember the documents, pop was where the population of each zip code was held. And then, just for fun, we're going to also keep track of all the zip codes that are included in a city. And we do this by defining a new field called zip codes and then using the aggregation operator add to set and aggregating on the underscore IDs. And the underscore IDs themselves are going to be the zip codes as the document passes us by. So again, we're grouping on the city. And as we look at each document, if the document is in a particular city bucket, we're going to add its population to the population field. And then we're also going to add the zip code to a zip codes array. And if we do that, let's see what we get. Okay, so now we see the documents have been aggregated on city. So for instance, we have Termo and Standish and Ravendale and its population. And then you can see that there's a list of zip codes that are included in that city. And for these particular cities, it looks like they're all single zip codes. They're very small cities. But I think if we go toward the top, there might be one that has multiple zip codes. Yes, Truckee. Uh, has a population of 9743, still a small town, but it includes two zip codes, and you can see we built this array of zip codes. But this document isn't very pretty because rather than saying city here, instead it says underscore ID. And that's just the nature of aggregation that you have to define an underscore ID that you're going to group by. So if we want to if we want to have this be a little bit prettier, we can reshape this document to essentially rename the underscore ID field to city. And we can do this through projection. And let me show you how that works. OK. So right here is the same aggregation query, but this time we have one more stage. So we have our matching stage to filter only our documents in, in California right here. We have our grouping stage to group by the city so that we can get the population. And that's how we wound up with the underscore ID in the result. And now finally we're going to reshape these documents, which is a one-to-one -one operation. And in this projection stage of the pipeline, we're going to suppress the printing of underscore ID. We have underscore ID zero. And we're going to define a new field called city. And that new field uses the, the dollar underscore ID value. So it's basically a reshaping of the document, a renaming of the document. And we're going to include the population, which we did by saying population one. And then we're going to include the zip codes by saying zip codes one. And that says include these things in the final result. And that's going to reshape our result to look a little prettier. And let's see how that looks. OK. So now we've reshaped the document. And you can see that uh, the population is, is here, the zip codes are here, and the city is here. You'll also notice that MongoDB did not retain the original ordering of the fields. So in our previous result, the underscore ID came first, and now the population came first, and then the zip codes and then the city. And this is different than what we actually specified. We had city population zip codes, and we got population zip code city. So the projection step will specify which fields you want to bring through to the final result, to the next stage of the pipeline, I should say, because you could aggregate further from here. But it does not retain the order necessarily. OK, now it's time for a quiz. So thinking again about 